welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course. I'm James Messer, and I'll be your host through this module of Removable Drive Technology. This is referenced in the a certification training for test 220-601, section 1.1, where we need to identify names, purposes, and characteristics of storage devices. In the 220-602 exam, also in section 1, we need to learn about how to add, remove, and configure some of these components in our systems. And storage devices and removable drive technology came up there. What we're going to learn today is first we'll learn what a removable drive really is. And we'll talk about how these USB connected drives, firewire connected drives, and something new in the industry is eSATA connected drives. We'll talk about best practices for these drives. And finally, we'll even troubleshoot or learn some of the things about troubleshooting some of these removable drives. So when the a certification is talking about removable drives, what is it referring to? Well, it means this storage media that can be easily added and removed from a system. And that could be many different types of components. It could be floppy disks. It could be DVD read-write disks. There could be something we call hybrid systems, which are a little bit older, but you still run across them occasionally in something called a jazz drive or zip drive. These are specialty drives through companies called iOmega. But there's still some other specific hybrids you need to know about out there. There's also something called this flash memory drive. We refer to it as these USB sticks or USB drives. And although they aren't physical moving drives, they still look like a drive in our operating system. And finally, there are hard drive types that are removable. We often think of our hard drives as being something inside of our system. But there are also some that can sit external and some that we can swap in and out. And we'll talk about the different kinds of those because there's all different ways to plug those in and different formats that might be available or not available for your system. Let's start with discussions of internal drives. And these are drives that have removable storage associated with them. You can think of it as the traditional floppy drive, for instance. You don't see very many of these anymore in the newer systems. It's hard to find a system that ships with a floppy drive. But these days, uh, you can see that you've got also CDs and DVDs and finally, even the new Blu-ray optical media are all drive types where you can plug in a piece of media and pop it right back out again and take that somewhere with you. Notice the difference in the storage of those. Floppy drives held 1.4 megabytes of information. The CD, when it came along, those CD-ROMs can store up to 700 megabytes, so much larger than our floppy drives. And then when DVD-ROMs came along, they really increased the speed for the dual layer DVDs, they go up to 8.5 gigabytes of information that they can store. The Blu-rays took it to a completely different level since those are required and have very specific requirements for holding a lot of information, specifically high resolution video. They will store up to, in the case of a dual layer Blu-ray, 50 gigabytes of information on a single optical disk. And these drives can, it's designed so that you can put something in and take it out very, very simply. There's not a lot of things you need to know about being able to use those or to add it or remove it from your system. You don't run into these much anymore. But some of the older systems, legacy systems, I've seen still using these in different environments. These are two that happen to be from a company called iOmega. And iOmega is still around. They make uh, removable hard drives these days. But one that became very popular, this is prior to being able to use a CD and write to and burn CDs very easily was something called a zip drive. And it had the same type of technology as a floppy drive might have. And it fit into this external system that, uh, in most cases, plugged into parallel ports. Some of the later versions had different interfaces on them. iOmega also came out with a later type of format that was really a removable hard drive. And these went up to 2 gigabytes of storage. You can see these are a little bit older, especially when you consider the sizes of removable hard drives these days. They don't really sell these anymore. They're not available. But you may run into these hybrid systems and some of the legacy operations and some of the larger environments. When we talk about flash memory, now we're getting into a very contemporary style of moving data between systems, primarily because these get up to very high densities. These 
memory sticks. This one happens to be one from Kingston called a, a Data Traveler. It could, this is an 8 gig memory stick. So the solid state memory that's inside of this system, this flash memory, can store up to 8 gig of information. You plug it into a USB connection on your computer, you write to it and read from it just like it was a hard drive. So that's why we call these things USB drives, even though there's nothing physical moving inside of this device. It's all solid state. Here's another picture of one. This is a cute little 1 gigabyte uh, USB stick has these little Lego type connections on it. You can stack them up on your system, keep them together. Very colorful. And this happens to be a USB drive reader. So if you happen to be in an environment that's got compact flash and it has USB connections and it has SD and it has XD and different types of memory cards, you can plug this memory reader into it and read all kinds of different formats of flash memory. You'll also see a lot of external hard drives. And these are ones that are used a lot. I use a lot of external hard drives on my system because I'm carrying around a lot of video. I'm doing a lot of editing when I'm on the road. And I use an external hard drive a lot to use these systems and move back and forth. There's three types of external hard drive systems you want to be aware of. One that's been around for a while is a USB connected hard drive. And that just connects via a USB port on a system and it plugs into a system usually with this mini USB connection. These USB drives uh, are, are easy to use. You plug them in, your system windows and, and other operating systems automatically recognize them as a drive. So it makes it very easy to use. Not all systems have FireWire, but if you do have a FireWire port, you could even use a FireWire drive. This happens to be one of the newer iOmega drives that has a FireWire port in the back of it. So a lot of Apple Macintosh systems, even some of the newer laptops and newer systems will have FireWire connections on them because that type of connection is used a lot for video. I have a video connection on my camera that is FireWire that goes into a FireWire port on my laptop. I could also use that port to plug in a FireWire hard drive. Makes it very simple. The newest style of external hard drives are called external serial attached interfaces, eSATA drives. Here's the back of an eSATA drive. This one happens to have a USB connection. That's the little USB connection there. But this also has an eSATA port on it as well because eSATA really has high speed transfers. If you happen to have an eSATA port on your computer system, on your laptop, that's the one you probably want to use because it's going to give you the highest rate of throughput than any of these other formats. This drive also requires power for it to run. So you can plug this into power, plug in your eSATA connection, and you're running at high rates of speed. There's some drives out there that have all three ports on the back of them, and you just happen to be able to use it on eSATA. If you're moving it to a system that only has USB, you can use the ESB, USB port. So it makes it really, really useful if you're running between a lot of different kinds of systems, but you still need to have a way to transfer a lot of data between them. Let's talk about best practices for removable storage. One of the things you want to really keep in mind is even though it's something you can pick up and take with you, you can look at it while it's on, you can pick it up off the table, you don't want to. These are hard drives for the most part, and these that we're looking at. Some of the memory sticks are a little bit different, but these hard drives aren't indestructible. They have moving parts inside of them, and they are hard drives. So you want to be very careful when you're transporting them, and you want to be sure when you're using them. I love this picture that I got because it describes exactly how it should be used on a flat surface, on its little rubber feet, so it's able to sit very solidly on its system. You're plugging it in. You're keeping it away from your keyboard. You're not picking it up and moving it around when you're, you have it plugged in because it's always there spinning. You want to make sure that the data that you put there is going to be there when you go back to it. You want to be sure that any type of media that you're storing is going to be in a cool, dry place. Don't keep this in the trunk of your car. You don't want to have it sitting outside in your garage. This is something that is magnetic media, and it will break down over time. Flash memory is a little bit more secure, but it's very sensitive to environmental heat. You want to be sure that it's also protected from those types of situations. And DVD happens to suffer from something called DVD rot. Not all DVD disks have this associated with them, but DVD rot is a term that's used to describe some of uh, the flecking and, and some of the coloration that happens on a DVD drive so that years later when you go back to the drive, it's unreadable. Not all DVDs are like this, but there have been some instances where drives have had problems. I've taken DVDs that I've had some data on for long periods of time pulled them out for years and plugged them in, and it ran just fine. But that's something you want to keep in mind when you're working with this media, whether it's internal media or removable media, 
Nothing's forever. You want to be sure that you keep backups of everything and maybe keep backups on different kinds of formats. Keep an external hard drive and a DVD-ROM available, and that way you're covered no matter what happens. When you're working with removable storage, there's some things that you can do to help troubleshoot. But when you're plugging in through a USB connection or a FireWire connection, you may have some challenges associated with this. A lot of the troubleshooting diagnostics CDs and DVDs boot your machine up from a, a floppy drive, from a CD-ROM, or from that DVD. And they don't usually contain drivers for a USB device or a FireWire device. So you can't just start your normal diagnostics disk and plug in your USB drive and expect to see it with the diagnostics. That creates a bit of a problem. You have to sometimes create customized boot disks that will load USB drivers or FireWire drivers for the hardware of your particular system because not every USB controller or FireWire controller is exactly the same. And of course, not all drives and formats are exactly alike. I can plug in USB almost anywhere. It's a very ubiquitous type of format. And I feel comfortable that the flash drive on my laptop, I can take to a system that's somewhere else, and it'll be able to read it, generally speaking, all the time. CD-ROM, DVD, and Blu-ray isn't always the case. Different drives will sometimes record in different ways and are not readable when you go from one machine to another. Generally, the manufactured DVDs and the ones that come, the manufactured Blu-ray discs that are coming from a large manufacturing plant that already have something on them, like the movies, those are almost always going to work across the board. But things that you're burning yourself, you want to test first and make sure you're able to move them from place to place. Generally, it works fine, but that's just something to keep in mind because it doesn't always work. Also, flash memory is easily overwritten. This is something that happened to me is these USB drives aren't always perfect. If you happen to be plugging into a system that has a USB drive that has been damaged or is not working properly, it does have the potential for overwriting everything on your DVD on that on that uh, flash drive, on that USB drive. DVD drives and CD drives, because they're optical, they don't have this problem. If you put it into a drive, a CD drive or a DVD drive, it's going to read it or it's not going to read it. But at least everything on there is still good. I can take it back to my original source. I ran into a case where I took a perfectly good USB stick. I plugged it into a system that had a bad USB drive, and it deleted everything on my drive. I brought it back to my system, and it said it was blank. So you want to be sure also you keep backups of these things or have these little free programs that you can download that will undelete files from your systems just in case something like that happens to you. And when all else fails, you may find your ears are very useful. On the ProfessorMesser.com, you'll see that I have actually captured a hard drive going bad. I've recorded the sound of what happens when a hard drive goes bad. And these smaller disks, you may want to just pick up in the storage device and put it to your ear to listen to it. And you'll be able to tell if it's running properly or not. In fact, you maybe don't want to lift it up. You may want to move your ear down to that device just to keep it solid on your desk. And listen to it. See if it's making making some extra noises, if it's clicking, if it's having to retry getting the information from the drive, that may be the clue to you that that drive is not performing properly. So in review, we've looked at an overview of removable drives. We've talked about USB and FireWire and external SATA drives. We've talked about some best practices for using those and keeping them on your desk and making sure they don't move around. And we've also talked about some of the challenges and things you may want to look out for when it comes to troubleshooting some of those removable drives. If you'd like to comment on this video, if you'd like to leave some messages on our message board or look at any of our free CompTIA Plus videos, you can always visit our website at freeaplus.com.